And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in that same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into, the, into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem to see this thing, which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all, that they, and all they that heard wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things, and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Let's remain standing as we sing this morning. Joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the glories of His righteousness and wonders of love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love amen thank you eddie good to see you this morning merry christmas to you and to your family we're glad that you're here to spend this morning with us and uh, uh i've heard of different churches for whatever reason i'm not their judge of, of canceling church on Christmas Day. That would be about the equivalent of doing that on Easter Sunday, and as far as I'm concerned. And had there only been two or three of us, I think we would have fired her up and had church here this morning on, on Christmas Day. But we're grateful that you're here and have given a portion of your family time and family day uh, to be with us in worship. number of folks on our prayer list, we won't take a lot of time for that, but I'll mention uh, Autumn. Uh, Johnson, she's doing better, but she's still in the hospital uh, in uh, Dallas at uh, UT Southwest. So remember her in your prayers. I believe Caleb has come home, if I heard right. And also just heard that Helen Mays is back here, and she is in uh, Memorial. I believe, was it Memorial? She's in Memorial, and I can't remember the room for something, I believe. And uh, so you remember uh, Miss Helen uh, in your prayers. Had a, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Williams had a pretty rough week and kind of know his story and 
uh, he fell on Christmas, I think it may have been Christmas Eve or Christmas Eve, Eve one, and uh, we thought he might have broke his hip, but he didn't, and uh, so, uh, so you remember him in your prayers, he's home and uh, recuperating from that. And uh, <clears throat> Louise Farr's here, she's been out a few weeks, a couple of weeks or so, and uh, good, to, good to have her back with us today. Had, had one that uh, passed away that I'm aware of, and that's Ricky Turner's nephew, uh, Daniel Godet, is that, is that right? And uh, so you remember, he's a pretty young man and diagnosed with cancer just a week or so ago and passed away yesterday, I think, or the day before. So, so you remember this family in your prayers. Are there any others we need to mention before we'll have the ushers come and have prayer? That's right. I didn't write that. Ryan, uh, Teresa Hassel's father passed away maybe Thursday, I believe it was. So, so that's up in Dallas, so remember them. Rick, Brother Rick came by this morning, and uh, Melody's, Rick Williams, Melody's mother, was down in Houston someplace, and uh, she hadn't been doing well lately, but they don't think she's going to make it. So he was headed down there this morning. So I don't even know her name. Is anybody? I, I don't know Melody's mom's name, so, uh, but remember. I'm sorry? Jack Gray. Did he get, did he get to come back to Lufkin? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. I knew they were hoping maybe for Friday, but, but uh, you, you continue to pray for, for Brother Jack this week. Any others? All right, if not, let's have the ushers head this way, and uh, they'll come. We'll have a word of prayer, and Brother Eddie will continue to lead us in uh, uh, some wonderful Christmas hymns this morning. All right, let's bow together for, for prayer. Starkey Sorrell, won't you voice this prayer, please? Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we're just here today to just bless you and thank you for everything you did for us on that cross. And dear Lord, we just pray that your Holy Spirit just move among us today in this meeting and that your word will be taken for granted in the gospel. And dear Lord, we just pray if anyone's here today that does not know you as our Savior, that you would just touch their heart. We pray for those that are ill or sick. Just pray that you'll touch them and heal them and dear lord we just pray for those traveling just bring them back home safe and dear lord we just pray for our military just give them the courage they need to continue fighting for our freedom dear lord just give brother steve the words that he needs to say from you and dear lord we just thank you for everything that you've given to us go with us and guide us and just bless this offering and bless the giver forgive us of our sins in jesus name amen
Amen. You know, it's uh, not unusual in Texas that we have to turn their conditioner on on Christmas Day. So hopefully y'all are weathering the crazy weather okay at your house. But let's praise the Lord together. We're going to sing several Christmas songs that we all know well and uh, just do one verse of most of them. So just join in as you can. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise With the triumph of the sky
so ago we began to think about this service and, and I, I asked for a Christmas miracle and that Christmas miracle was that we could be in and out of here in about an hour and ten minutes now, if you're a regular you'll, you know that we're asking for a miracle today but, but, uh, but, but we're, we're, we're going to try to we're going to try our best to, uh, uh, to do that this morning I want to I want to talk to you. I know most places, and we have for the last two or three Sundays, we've, we've been over in uh, Luke, the second chapter, and we've talked about the traditional Christmas story passage as we read to begin the service this morning. But this morning, what I want to do is, is something a little bit different. Several weeks ago, somebody asked me what we were going to do on Christmas Day, and they said, uh, will, you, will you present the gospel? And and, and it's, it's my practice, it, it really doesn't matter if we meet for church or if we meet for a funeral or, or whatever, I think any time that you have opportunity to speak to people that the gospel ought to be presented. So, so you just know this, if, if you ever happen to ask me to do your funeral, I won't just stand there and talk about what a wonderful person that you were. It's, I, I will at some point, in some way, form, or fashion, I'll, I'll present the gospel and and how folks can be saved. And so this morning what I wanted to do was, was I wanted to do this, that, that, that some 2,000 years ago, we, we get all of these Christmas cards and, and we see all of these things of, and we see the starlit night and the little stable out someplace and, and, and we're familiar with all of those pictures. But, but the world that, I, I wanted to think about the world that Jesus was born into. It, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a peaceful situation, and it wasn't, a, it wasn't any of those things. O, over the past few weeks, we, we made the discovery a few weeks ago, or I, I preached on the fact that when, when the angel Gabriel come and made the proclamation that, that the Christ child was going to be born, God had been silent for 400 years. So after the, after the prophets of the Old Testament for 400 years... God had really not spoken as he had done through the course of the Old Testament through the prophets. Well, he, he, he spoke then, and, and so when, when, when we're talking about this period of time when Jesus was going to be born uh, in his human birth into the world, then, then, then we know that there was, there was some spiritual darkness in, in, in the world. If we were to study, we would find out that not only was there some spiritual darkness, but there was there was political darkness. You see, the, the, God's people, they were under the oppressive rule of the, of, of the Romans. And, and, and it, wasn't, it wasn't something that was very pretty. The, the nation of Israel, it was, it was a fractured group. In fact, there were four different sects of, of people that were fighting for control to, to try to lead the people of Israel. And it was it was the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Essenes, and the, and the Zealots. And, and they were fighting for control. And, 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 and the fact that these four groups were kind of maneuvering for control, that was only made worse because of the oppressive rule and, and the reign of, of, of the Romans. So, so it, was, it was dark that way. And, and there, were, there were a number of things that made the world, as it were, a dark place. Well, well, I want you to understand that Jesus was born into a dark world. And into that dark world, he came to give hope. 
Today, I, I, I had this as part of our outline, and I was going to talk about this, but, I'm, but I've, I've skipped it, trying to get in this, this uh, time limit that I want us to be on today. And, and today, we live in a world, this is part of your outline, we live in a world of hurt and hopelessness. We live in a world of hurt and hopelessness. We live in a world that is, that is pretty dark. We, our, our nation, our world is dark spiritually. I, I was listening to the news one day this week as I was writing, uh, doing some things, and, and, and I heard several times through several news accounts that, that the number of people, not just in America, but, but in other places in the world, the number of people that believe in God, that number is decreasing with every passing year. It, it's not on the increase, it's on the decrease. We live in a dark world spiritually. We live in a world that over the past 50 or so years that, that, we, have, that we have murdered some 60 million babies. We live in a dark world. We live in a dark world where we elect people and, and, and we know that they stand for things that are totally contrary to the Word of God and yet we... we, we lift these people up and we put them in high powerful places well we could talk about this for a long long time but but suffice to say we too live in a dark world we had a presidential election here a couple of months ago a month and a half ago and and regardless of whether you're happy about it or whether you're sad about it the one whom we elected is not going to bring the hope that we need we had one run some eight years ago, and that was a part of his platform, Hope and Change. He didn't bring the hope that we need. The same, the same thing is true today that was true 2,000 years ago. Jesus was born into the world 2,000 years ago to bring hope to a, to a dark, lost, demented society world. And I tell you today, on December the 25th, 2016, that Jesus is still the only hope that our world has. He's our only hope. Now open your Bible to Romans 15. We're going to read two verses. It's not, a, it's not a Christmas passage. It's not one that we would normally read on, 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 Easter, on Easter, Christmas Sunday. But we're going to read it today because we're, we want to ask this question, is there hope? Is there hope not, not just for our society, not just for our nation, not just for our world? Is there, hope for, is there hope for me? You may be here today and you may be struggling spiritually. You may be struggling in, in, in a relationship, a, a relationship that you've been in for a long time has fallen apart. You, you may be in a, in, in, a, in a financial bad spot. What, whatever it is, I want you to know that we can look to the Word of God and we can find that even though all of these things and, and all of these areas of life are dark, that there is hope. We just have to know where to look for it. Stand with me as we read these two verses of Scripture, verse 12 and verse 13. And, and it just talk, it, it, this verse, verse 12, begins by saying, and again Isaiah says. Now the reason it says that, because Isaiah has already said, he has given us a lot of prophecy concerning this coming period of time that as we celebrate Christmas. So, so he says here, he says, and again Isaiah says, there shall be a root of Jesse, and he who shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him... Well, this is good news. The Gentiles shall hope. Now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you today for what this day means and the joy that it brings to our hearts and our lives through through memory and through, through even just being surrounded by loved ones and family this day. I look across this sanctuary and there, there are families that are all seated in church together today. And God, we, we thank you for that, for that privilege. Lord, but we also know that in the real world that we live in, that Lord, there are folks in this room and, that are struggling. They're looking for hope. They're looking for something to, 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 to place their... To, to cast an anchor upon. 
And Lord, today we look to your word to, to look for the place where we, regardless of our situation, we look to the place that we can turn to for the hope that we need to survive the things that are going on in our world. So Lord, today, meet us where we are. Meet us at our situation. Meet us at the, at the, at the place in our life where we, where we just happen to be living today. And Lord, supply the hope that is needed in each of our lives today. Save the one who may be lost. Encourage the one who may be discouraged. Lord, res bring restoration to the life of those who, just, who are in, 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 in places in their life where those relationships need to be restored. So, Lord, we pray that through the course of this service that you would receive the honor and the glory from all that happens today and from our life as we go forward from this day. Bless this service. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. The word hope, it's a, it, it's a glorious word. It, it, it's a word that, that as Paul is, is writing here under the and, and we believe, if, if you're a regular here, you know that we believe this. We believe the Bible is the inspired, infallible, and inerrant Word of God. So as Paul is writing this passage that we read for a text today, and Paul is writing under the direct supervision and the direct inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God, he expresses God's desire. And, and he expresses God's desire that we... I want you to know this is God's desire for you, that you overflow with hope. Not that you just have a, a little bit, not that you just have a, a smidgen, but that you overflow with hope. That, that's, what, that's what God wants for us. With, with all the hurt and with all the hopelessness in our world, it's, it's important for us to remember. Now, the takeaway truth that I want us to leave here today with, that, that hope that we can stick in our shirt pocket and carry with us today, and, and we can pull it out every day of our life from this point forward, is simply this. Christ was born to give us hope. Christ was born to give those people some 2,000 years ago hope, and Christ was born to give hope for you and for me this day. And, and for all of the days to come. Now, in the Bible, the word hope, it's, it's not the same. We, we're always hoping for things. We hope our team wins. We hope, we hope we get this job, and we hope we get whatever. We, we hope for all sorts of things. But the hope of the Bible, is it, it, it refers to a confident expectation. A confident expectation. So, so keep that in mind as we talk about these four things about hope. We begin today with the reality of hope. The reality of hope. Where does, where does hope originate? Well, we, we look to these two verses that we read, and in the 12th verse it says this, In Him, and that Him is who? Jesus. In Him shall the Gentiles, and we all know that's who we are, in Him shall the Gentiles hope. Now, in the 13th verse, we read these words, Now may the God of hope, 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 that, that living, that confident expectation. Where, where is it found? It, 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 the, the Scripture tells us where hope originates, where this confident expectation originates. Where? In God. Hope originates in God. Listen, hope is not found. We, we've, all, we've all been down this road before. We've all been down that place where we said, man, if I could just get that job. If we could just buy that house, if I could just get that raise, if I could just make this amount of money, if I could just live on this side of town, hadn't we all been there? And, and I think that we've all found the same thing, that, that all of those things, all of those jobs, all of those amounts of money, and all of those places, and all of those things that we thought were going to give us hope, did they give us lasting hope? No. Temporary hope, sometimes. Lasting hope, no. No. The Scripture tells us that real hope is found in a relationship with the living and the true God. That's where, listen, you don't have a shot at lasting hope if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior because He was born to give us hope. Listen to Psalm 43, 5. It says there, why are you cast down, O my soul? 
And why are you disquieted within me? Now listen to this. Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. Listen to 1 Peter 1, 3. It says there, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope. To a living hope. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Listen, we can trust God. We can trust God when he explicitly says that hope is a reality that is only found in a relationship with Jesus Christ. You can take that to the bank. You can, you can, you can place your faith and trust, and I'm telling you, he's not just right most of the time, he's right all of the time. He has a perfect track record. Listen to what the Bible says in Romans 8, 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time, we, we all familiar with those, they're not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. I'm telling you, man, hope Jesus is the reality of hope. Jesus was born so that you and I could have hope. So we have the reality of hope. Then the scripture tells us, not only is, is he the reality of hope, but it tells us in the same verse, verse 13, it tells us about the rewards of hope. Now here's what Paul says in that verse 13 next. He says, now may the God of hope fill you, or, or fill you with all, and he's going to give us two things. And those two things are what we're going to refer to as the rewards, the tangible rewards that come with this hope this hope that is found in Jesus Christ. Well, what are these two rewards that we have? Well, first is joy. Joy. Webster's Dictionary defines that word this way, a very glad feeling. Happiness, delight. Definition number two in there says this. It says anything that causes this. So, so Webster said, and Webster, he was, he was a pretty smart guy. Webster said that, that, that joy is a feeling, is a very glad feeling. Happiness and delight are anything that causes the glad feeling or causes happiness or causes delight. Well, let me tell you what the Bible says. Since we, believe, we don't believe Webster is the inspired and infallible Word of God, but we believe that the Bible is. And here's what the Bible tells us about, about joy. The word joy comes from the word chara or kara, C-H-A-R-A. And from that word, we get our word grace. Grace. Now, we, 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 we sometimes we, we confuse joy and, and pleasure. Let, let me tell you a little bit about the word pleasure. The word pleasure comes from the word, from where we get our word, hedonism. Hedonism. And that is the philosophy of self-centered and pleasure-seeking lifestyle. Now, when Jesus was born, okay, Go back. We, we were here to it a couple of weeks ago. When Jesus was born, the angels came. Remember, we, we read it in, as we began the service day. The angels came, and they began to spread the message. You remember that? Here, here's what they said in Luke 2 and the 10th verse. Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to or far all people. So, so one of the rewards of hope, if we're in this relationship with Jesus Christ, the one who was born to give us hope, one of the rewards is, is joy. We need joy. 
If you're looking for joy, you don't find it in church membership, you don't find it in perfect attendance, you don't find it in money, but we find it in grace. We find it in Jesus. But then he said, not only when we read that, may the God of hope fill you with all joy, but he also gave us another one which we need. Did you see what it was? Peace. Peace. Peace is a, it's a sense of well-being and a, and a sense of fulfillment that comes from God. And it's dependent upon his presence in your life. Now, we, we've already talked about how, how all of this stuff that we, as we began to grow up and become young adults, how, how we thought all of this stuff was going to make us happy and give us joy and give us peace and all those things. But, but we've already lived, we've been down this road, most of us have, we've been down this road long enough to find out that all that stuff that we thought was going to give us those things didn't really give us those things. But the, the, but the book that we say, is the inspired, infallible, and inerrant Word of God tells us that, that we can have peace. And we can have this peace because it comes from God and it's dependent upon His presence in our life. Now let me tell you, let me tell you how generous God is with these two gifts. This gift of joy and this gift of peace. In the latter part of verse 13, look at what he says. May the God of hope it doesn't say give you a teaspoonful like a medicine. He's not going to give you a cup full to give you a little refreshment. Do you see what it says? Do you? You need to look and you need to mark it. Because the Bible says that he will fill us. Now that ought to cause a backslidden Baptist to say amen. He will fill you with all joy and peace. Listen, this is important that you note this on Christmas. The amount of your filling is determined by your emptiness of self. If you're all full of yourself, if you're all full of what you want and your desires and, and everything is all about you, you're not, you don't have much room for a filling. But if you empty yourself of you, and if I empty myself of me, and we begin to be in a position where the Bible, which we again believe is inspired, infallible, and inerrant, where the Word of God says that He will fill us. Well, if I'm empty of self, I have a lot of room to be filled with this joy and peace that the Bible says that He will fill us with. So if you walk out of here today and say, huh, that not mean much to me. Let me tell you your problem. Your problem is this. You're too full of yourself. And you need to empty yourself of yourself so that you can be filled with the joy and the peace that Jesus and our Father wants to give us if we will empty ourselves of all of these things. Man, these are great rewards for those who find hope in Jesus. So we have the reality of hope. We have the rewards of hope. But there's a rule of hope. Now, the, the rule of hope is this. It's very simple. Ready? You must believe to receive. You must believe to receive. We, we, we talk about how the, the Bible tells us that he is the same. Yesterday, today, and forevermore, he's the same. Well, God has always had one condition. One condition for us to receive his blessing on our life. Just one thing. Here's what Jesus was asked to question. In John, the 6th chapter, the 28th and, in, and the 29th verse, here, here was the question. What shall we do that we may work the works of God? Well, the response comes in the 29th verse of John 6. And it says there, Jesus answered and said to them. 
Here's the answer. This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. You know what that is? It's faith. 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 Listen, in, 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 whose, in, in whose heart does this hope and this, this, this abound and overflow? Well, listen, it, it, it's the one. It's not the one who has the most money. It's not the one who has the highest prestigious job. It's not the one who lives in the biggest house. It's not the one who wears the nicest clothes. The one in whose life, in whose heart, this hope and, and, and joy overflows in our life is the one who believes and trusts in Jesus Christ. That's who it is. I read a story several years ago of some scientists that they were, you know, scientists do a lot of things with rats. We try to get rid of them and they collect them. Well, these scientists, they were doing an experiment with, I think they were wharf rats. And, and, and what they would do is they would place them in a tank of water. And, and they would leave them there, to, and they just left them to see how long they would survive before they would drown. So they took the first little group. I don't know how many it was, but they took the first little group, and, 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 and they 17 minutes was average. Well, they... Took, took, them, took some more a bit later, and they kind of knew what to look for, and they took some more. They put them in this water, and when they got about to the 15-minute mark, 14, 15 minutes, they, they, they began to see them strength, so they take them out. And they dry them off, and they put them back in their little cage, and they feed them, and they take care of them for a few days, and, and then they, they put those same group of rats back in the water again. And they do this for three or four or five different times as they do this. And, and, and what, had, what had began is those rats would live about the average of about 17 minutes. It is those rats, they went from living an average of 17 minutes to surviving almost 36 hours. And somebody asked the question, what happened? What, what was it that made the difference? And even for a dumb old rat... The, the scientist that was in charge, he said this. He said, they believed they could survive because they had survived before. I, I, I tell you this morning that you and I, now we get in those situations and sometimes we think, man, I'm not going to survive this. But we know because of the joy and the peace and the hope that we have in this relationship before because he has seen us through circumstances and he has seen us through uh, tribulation and he has seen us through difficult times relationally, financially, and spiritually and otherwise. We know today if we're back in the midst of a, of a turbulent time in our life, what do we all really believe? We believe that he has seen us through in the past and he's going to see us through today because he always has. So I ask you this morning, have you placed your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ? Because the faith that can survive the onslaught of all of the things that happens in this life is faith in Jesus Christ and him alone. That's the rule of hope. You must believe in order to receive. Here's number four, and it's still in the 13th verse, and that is this, the release of hope. Here's, here's the, that verse in its entirety. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of of the Holy Spirit. Now, remember that takeaway truth, that, that Jesus was born to give us hope. Listen to me this morning. Our God is a God of hope. It doesn't matter what your circumstance or what your situation or what your trial or, or whatever, it doesn't matter what, what that may be today. God is a God of hope. And, and listen, He yearns to fill you with joy. He yearns to fill you with peace. And he, he, he yearns to bring you to the place where your hope will overflow. Regardless of your personality, regardless of your temperament, regardless of your circumstance, the God of heaven, you, you want a Christmas gift to top all the rest of them? Here it is. 
The God of heaven will release hope into your life through the ministry of the Holy Spirit who is among us in this place today. To fail to believe God in this matter of hope is, is to literally slap the face of God. I tell you this morning that 2,000 years ago, Christ was the hope for a broken world. Today, December the 25th, 2016, that same Christ is the hope for a broken world. He's not only the hope for a broken world, he's the hope for your broken circumstance. He's the, he's the hope for whatever is wrong and whatever, is, whatever may not be like it ought to be in your life. I, I'm not your hope. He is our hope. He is our hope. Charles Deems made this statement one time. He said, most people doubt their beliefs and believe their doubts. What we need to do is we need to believe our beliefs and doubt our doubts. If we really believe that God is who he says he is, then, then we must believe that he is the God of hope because that's what the scripture says. And he yearns to fill you with joy and with peace. He yearns to meet the needs of your life. It doesn't matter what the circumstance is. It doesn't matter how far into that circumstance you've gone. It doesn't matter the wrongs that you could bring up and say, well, God couldn't fix this. And God, I'm telling you this morning, as sure as I'm standing before you, I believe with my heart of hearts from the top of my head to the sole of my feet that he is your hope, he is your peace, and he is your joy if you'll allow him to be. But I'll also tell you this. He will let you walk out this door just as miserable as you were when you walked in if you're not willing to say yes to the hope that he gives us today. You say, well, whose choice is it, Brother Steve? It's yours and mine. It's ours. We see what he desires to do. He desires to fill us with joy and peace. He desires for us to be in a living relationship with Him. But it's up to us whether we accept the gift and the hope of Christmas or not. Let's pray. Father, how grateful we are that we come here on this Christmas day and we look to a, to a passage of Scripture that's, that's not really one of those Christmas passages. But we find in your divine, precious word that you're the God of hope and you desire to fill us with the things that we need to live in this old broken world that we live in today. Lord, this morning I would, if one is here today and never been saved, that you would save them. I would today, if there's one here today that's just not where they ought to be in their relationship with you, that they would come back to that place. Like the prodigal son came home and the father ran out to welcome him on the road lead, leading to the house. You would do that to us today. Lord, whatever circumstance is, is, is evident in our life, we pray today that you will meet those things in our life and that you would fill us with that hope and that joy and that peace that only comes from you. Bless this invitation. We pray it and ask it. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together. Silent night, holy night, all is calm. Silent.
at night. Holy night, darkness flies, all is light. Shepherd, hear the angels sing. Alleluia, hail the King. the Savior is born. Silent night, holy night, Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from Thy holy face with the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus Lord at thy birth, Jesus Lord at thy birth. From our family to your family, we wish you a Merry Christmas and uh, a good week. Just a couple of announcements. One, keep in mind that next Lord's Day, we will have the same schedule. That will be a 10 o'clock worship service on New Year's Day. And uh, I, I can't think of a better way to begin a new year than in the Lord's house. And uh, so I hope that you will, that you will make uh, uh, arrangements to, uh, to be with us uh, next Lord's Day. Anything else that we need to mention? I'm going to sing our benediction today, so that's the reason I'm trying to find out anything. All right, this will stand as our benediction. You can see it if you need to. It is sun. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died. To buy my pardon, an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives, because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future, my life is worth the living just. Because he lives And then one day I'm gonna cross that old river I'll fight life's final Final war with pain and then as death, it gives way to victory. I'm going to see the lights of glory 
hand I'll know he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know My life is worth the living just because He lives. My life is